So if if I'm uh, if I'm listening to this now and I'm thinking right, I'm currently spending X with an agency, mm -hmm. and you always get these conversations going. Well, I could employ three people for that. Mm -hmm. Should they employ three people, or, or where does the balance sit between um, in-house SEO mm -hmm. and agency support? And I suppose what what's the sort of perfect setup? Yeah, of course. So I think. When it comes to content, no one can write about your product or service like you. You live this product, you live this service day in, day out, so you know it better than anyone ever could. So where an agency can come in is they can feed you the ideas based on keyword research and search intent and things like that. But if you guys can create it with that information, that knowledge, you're going to create something that's much better than any agency potentially could do on their own, working in isolation. And when you say that's the product content and the informational content. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. And I think in terms of potentially digital PR and links, again, you know your customers, you know your brand really well as a, 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 a company. So where an agency can support you is making you aware of a, a few potential uh, tactics or strategies or maybe help with some resource in terms of illustrations or anything like that. But if you're able to got, have boots on the ground that are constantly chasing down these reporters, these bloggers, these journalists, and be like, here's some awesome stuff we're doing, let's get it featured, let's amplify it, let's make people aware of it, then you're able to put more resource into it than potentially an agency can do. But you're getting that support from potentially an agency side of things. So maybe you get some agencies to give some ideas. Exactly. But you work with the agency to execute them, or actually, if you've got the in house people to execute them. And I suppose just linking that, you might have in house PR, mm -hmm. which is more traditional. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how do you educate the in house PRs on the value of a link or the value of digital PR and where it all fits together? Yeah, it's tough because. Traditional PRs are great at getting featured in magazines and newspapers, but that just doesn't translate to online. So what we would do is educate them to the way that um, if you're getting these features, we want those links. We need to show them that if we can get a link in The Guardian, The Times, Vogue, whatever it might be, that that's going to translate to more eyes on the site, more authority for the site. All these links are little votes of recommendation that Google needs in order to uh, properly rank sites in their search results and the more votes of recommendation they have from these brilliant sites the more likely you are to perform well and get people to the site and you mentioned a few things there like Vogue and the yeah. Times things uh, so I'm assuming here all links aren't equal no definitely not so what I would always suggest is primarily going after links that are super relevant to your site so if you are uh, an equestrian site for example Let's go with horse blogs, uh, maybe country living lifestyle magazine like that. Let's go for things like that. If you were to get a link from, say, a finance site, that's just not relevant. So where's the value coming from? We can take a few liberties with sort of the top tier like national papers like BBC or anything like that, because Google understands that they cover such a wide gamut of uh, topics that, one, they're so authoritative, but two, having them link out to the equestrian site isn't unheard of so it just we want to get that good mix of super authoritative sites but also um ones that are relevant to our audience and our service slash product yeah